Now in this lesson we're going to talk about um, creating broken color in the shadows. It's a, a bridge in Sedona, Arizona. And the first thing we want to consider is the composition. Because <clears throat> again, that's what carries the painting. That's what makes it work or not work, is the composition. And uh, so you can have your values right, your color right, but if it's badly composed, it's just not going to work at all. Now the first thing I want to consider is this bridge, because I have it dead center. And that's going to be the center of interest to some degree. Although my real interest is in maybe the rocks and the trees, but um, this will be, for all intents and purposes, the, the focal point. So I want to move that out of center. If I find the middle of the picture vertically, that's roughly middle, and if I find it middle horizontally, you'll see I got that um, bridge dead center. And it's, you know, it's dead center vertically and horizontally. So I need to think of a way to move it off center. And um, Photoshop's a good way to do it. Uh, but I still use the sketchbook. Do small thumbnails where I move the shapes around and create a better composition. Um, and I did it that way for 30 some years before Photoshop. So you don't have to do Photoshop. But it's just a good way for me to talk about it. They have some other uh, things for the computer besides Photoshop um, that you can use. Although Photoshop's $10 a month. Uh, it's like everything else. It's a membership now. So it's helpful to have, but you don't have to have it. But you do want to mess with the composition. You do want to think through the picture and, and find the best composition. So I need to decide how to move this bridge off center. So first thing I want to think is, do I want more sky or do I want more rocks? And I want more rocks because that's what I'm interested in is the rocks. Not so much the sky. Not that interesting. Then I need to decide do I want more trees from the left or from the right side or from the left side because it's pretty symmetrical. There's almost the same amount or same weight of kind of reddish orange trees as there is yellow orange tree. So which one do I want showing most? And I want more weight over here and less over here. And I want more in the rocks and less in the sky. So that tells me how to crop. I'm going to start on the cropping, cut off a lot of this red orange and cut off some of the sky and have a lot of the rock and a lot of the yellow trees. So you can see I'm moving the composition over to the right. Now if I find the center, do the X again. And I usually do this on my canvas and on my sketchbook before I do the thumbnails. Uh, just so I, I'm, I'm sure to keep things out of center right there. Now the bridge is off center. It's on the upper left side right here. And I have a lot less trees here and a lot more trees here. So now it's not symmetrical. More weight on this side, but yet the bridge is on the other side, so that balances it off. It's a lot higher where before it was dead center going uh, 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 vertically. Now it's higher vertically. More rocks, less sky. Hope that makes sense. I'm placing the focal point over to the upper left. Uh, I could put it to the upper right, have less of the yellow green trees and more of the red orange trees but I'm pushing it over there and I have more rocks less sky and that gives me a lot better composition so that's how I kind of think through photographs on how to compose them and I do the exact same thing on a thumbnail my thumbnails are about three by five inches big roughly I mean they can be square they can be five by five or four by six or two by four inches and then I'm, all I'm seeing is shape. I'm seeing this shape of the vertical trees, the flat ground, and these vertical trees. That's three shapes. Then I'm seeing the shape of these hills back in here and a little bit of flat ground there. And then the sky and the bridge gets placed in there last. So I'm breaking this up into one, two, three, 
four, five, six shapes. And it's a lot easier to draw and design the picture with six shapes than it is with, you know, 45, which you could easily um, find in here if you don't get rid of detail. But I'm trying to see mass and big shape. And the big shapes are predicated on this shadow pattern and then the two light shapes in the background, the flat plane and the slanted plane, and then the sky, three light shapes. So keeping it as simple as possible, because I can find the value for, I forgot what it was, five or six shapes, a lot easier than I can for 45 shapes. So reduce everything from four to eight shapes. Any more than that, you're getting too picky. You're getting too uh, detail-oriented. And I will block my painting in color-wise with those four to eight shapes. Now, when we think about the shadows here, of course, this is all the foreground is in shadow. So I know I will have different values of shadow. We got lighter shadow in here, um, a little bit darker shadow, and then really darker shadow. And then maybe one or two values in between. So I got about four or six four to six values of dark in here. And everything in here is darker than the background or darker than the sunlight. There is a few small dark accents back in there. But even though these rocks look real light, uh, some of these yellow leaves and shrubbery look real light, none of it is as light as anything in the sunlight. So. Keep everything in the shadow dark enough that it stays in the shadow. But I do have a lot of light shadows. So I have to have a value range in there so that I have form in the shadow. And then after I get those four to six values, probably three to five values within the shadow, I want to start breaking up each value a different color. So I'll block this in a darker yellow green then I'm going to add a lot of color variation or some color variation. And color variation is same value, different color. And it just gives a sense of finish or detail without creating detail. Detail are these small little dark and light value changes that we see everywhere. Just, you know, the dotted stuff. It's value change. That's what detail is little value changes. So I want same value, different color for the broken color. Now moving on to some paintings here. This is a painting by um, Marianne Watchtel. She was a California Impressionist um, early 20th century. You can see how simple her shapes are. No detail. So that allows her to come into these shadows and create some subtle color variation. There's not a lot. She keeps it fairly simple. But you can see two or three colors in here that are slightly different. Somewhat the same value. Same thing here. You see a lighter yellow green, orange green, blue green. Uh, looks like some reddish green in there. A little bit of value change, but not enough to make it look like detail. But enough to make it look more refined. Then the further back the shadows go, back in here, very little broken color, but there is some. There's a, 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 a violet, a blue violet, a little bit of a, a bluish green in there. Some color variation. The shapes and values are simple, but the color, you can see the color, very, the broken color in here. Uh, the broken color really gives it a lot more punch. It makes the color a lot more interesting, rather than just one flat color in each of the big, big shapes. But the further away these big shapes go, the simpler they are. They don't need as much color variation. You'll also notice the shadows in the foreground. While they are cool, these are cool greens compared to the sunlit greens. They're more of a yellow green, an orange green, uh, and they're real warm compared to the shadow. But these shadow colors are a lot um, warmer compared to the background shadow. The background shadow is really cool, really blue, blue-violet. Foreground shadows are cool compared to the sunlight, but they're a lot warmer than the background. All the shadows are cool 
relative to the sunlight. But the foreground shadows are going to be warmer than the background shadows. So be careful that your foreground shadows don't get too blue. Unless you have snow in the foreground and shadow, then that's obviously going to be fairly blue, muted blue, or blue-violet. But um, generally speaking, shadows get cooler and bluer as they, as they recede. 